Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, words, my brethren, in all of Europe, because speaking of Europe, let's talk about a brilliant tournament which was started in Europe just last year in 2017. Richard Schaefer, Kale Sondland, and all those guys over there. You know, they're concluding the first season of it coming up soon. Uh, they'll have the final for 160 uh, for, uh, for 168 and Cruiserweight coming up soon to include the first season. They've announced the um, the weight classes for the next season of the World Boxing Super Series. The World Boxing Super Series has announced that uh, you know that they want to do three weight classes instead of two for the ne for the next season of the World Boxing Super Series. Now they've already came out, they've already announced, and they've already had a press conference for one of the weight classes and some of the fighters that are going to be participating in the tournament for that weight class. And those and that weight class is the band weight division, one hundred and eighteen pounds, and it comes in the form. You know, you're going to have some some great fighters on, on, in this tournament. And I think this tournament, maybe the name, the name recognition isn't, isn't necessarily as high as even the cruiserweights. But in terms of talent, in terms of the fighters, in terms of the, the matchups and the significance of fights that you could have in that division, it's, it's, it's right up there. It's right up there with both tournaments this year. Um, Bantamweight division, you know, it was announced that the likes of Ryan Burnett, Zolani Tete and Emmanuel Rodriguez, who just won his title against Paul Butler this past weekend, will be competing in the tournament. Um, and man, I mean that that that's really that's really awesome. And you know you got Burnett, undefeated fighter, you know uh, from coming out of Northern Ireland. Um, he's he's done a hell of a job. You know you got Tete, who's not undefeated. He's had he has losses, but he seems to be a fighter that's that's coming into his own. Who who is staking his claim in the division? Um, is a dangerous fan friendly. Fighter to watch. He's coming off of a good win against Omar Nervaez, okay? And, um, you know, he's looked good in his last couple of fights. And like, like, like I mentioned earlier, Emmanuel Rodriguez, a guy that, you know, I've seen fight in person before. Solid, you know, really good fighter. Um, has yet to really, in my opinion, you know, Paul Butler is a quality fighter. But in my opinion, Emmanuel Rodriguez has yet to meet a fighter as talented as him in the ring yet. And I think that's finally going to happen in this tournament. So, that it'll be good to see him maybe get into get into a situation where he can't be complacent. He can't just cruise his way to a victory. Um, and if he can cruise his way to a victory against the likes of a Tay Tay, against the likes of a Burnett, then it just speaks to how good he is. Because at the moment, um, he's why he has a world title and why he has a quality win over Paul Butler. Um, still want to see a little more from Manuel Rodriguez, but right now as it stands, he is I believe the only Puerto Rican world champion in boxing. Um, so fair play to him. But this this is great because 118, you know, is is a very um, it's it's a bit division that gets overlooked. Even I overlook it sometimes because you know I get so fixated on 112 and 115. You know, 115 especially with you know the likes of you know it has Ron Vasai, Strada, Romo Gonzalez, Donny Nietzsche is moving up. You know, 115 for me is is one of the best divisions in boxing, and it's the one that's been getting a lot of more push from HBO, and it's the one that I I, just, I genuinely enjoy a lot more. But 118 is an overlooked division, and I'm I'm glad they're in the tournament, and I'm glad they got they've already gotten. Three of the four world champions in this division uh, to agree to join the tournament. Um, it is possible because they're, 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 they still have five more slots to fill. There, there, it, it is still possible that they could get the winner of uh, Jane McDonald versus Nayola Monster Noe, which will be happening. Uh, that fight takes place May twenty fifth in Tokyo. Um, so the winner of that fight could be also in the tournament. So you're looking at another tournament. You know, another another scenario where. You're gonna have a fight for undisputed, you know, in the cruiserweight division. It hasn't happened yet, but we're gonna get a fight for undisputed between Marek Garcia and Alexander Usyk. Um, same thing in this division, and on top of that, you know, Nayo is a monster. Noye, for as talented as he is, and as good as he is, and I, I still want to watch him fight. I still like the guy, not as much as I used to, because of the fact that I think he should have at least fought Estrada or Rumbasai before he left 115. Um, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm still a bit mad. I'm mad at him so, still for that. But, you know, it'd be a hell of a scenario if he is to win a title here. You know, it'd be a third world title in uh, a third weight class in 16 fights. And he would, uh, you know, he would stake his claim as one of the best power pound fighters in boxing and then enter in a tournament with great fighters like Tate, you know, solid, you know, good world champions like Tay Tay. Um, Emmanuel Rodriguez, Ryan Burnett. These are these are, these these are the kind of fights that if you're Nayo Noye, these are the kind of fights you need to be having to you know validate, continue validating your spot in the top of the world of boxing because a lot of people think Inoye is one of the best fighters out there. I still think in terms of talent, he is one of the, he's top five talent in boxing. It's just 
he needs one of those fights that's going to challenge him. And I don't think he's had it yet. And I wanted, I want, I, I really wanted it for him at one fifteen because Rung Vasai and him would have just been oh such a great fight. But um, this is not a bad alternative, not at all. The, 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 this is actually the alternative that he would, that I would have liked for him if he's going to not fight Rung Vasai. So uh, you know, you got to get credit where credit is due, man. Richard Schaefer, Kale Sutherland, they're doing a hell of a job with with, with this tournament. Um, and just the, the, the guys are getting in. I think they're even stepping it up a notch, honestly, because, you know, to be to be fair, the 168 tournament, the, the super middleweight t- portion of the tournament was okay. You know, he had the guys like George Groves, who I like, Eubank, who's pretty good, and like Caleb Smith, who has left a lot to be desired with his performances. But outside of Willie Groves and Eubank um, and Jurgen Bramer, honestly, really hasn't been a whole lot of, he at 168, you know, Rob Brandt came in, moving up to weight, didn't look so good. And, uh, you know, and, and other, than, other than that, you know, Jamie Cox, Avini Yale Durham, you know, it was whatever 168 to me. Cruz Wade was really the, 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 the focus of the tournament for me because he had so many qualifiers in there. Usyk, Torticos, Gassiev, Marco, I think Mark Puglis even in the tournament. So uh, that's been the highlight of the tournament. But I think this year with their announcement of the 118 pound tournament, and then now also, uh, also in this ESPN article I got in front of me, they're also going to do a 140 pound tournament. So you're looking at you're looking at, you know, the guys. They already are saying that, um, you know, that, that are going to be in the the the, the World Box Super Series, um, Junior Welterweight Tournament. You know, you got guys like Regis Progre, who you know Regis Progre. For, for those of you guys who are not well versed on Regis Progre, I think he is one of the best American fighters we have. I think in terms of guys who are coming up, guys that you should be paying attention to, he's one of them. He's exciting. Got a good, he's got he's got a good attitude, and you know just he's someone that wants he wants all the smoke. He even said he he even he even pulled on Terence Crawford. I won't, I won't fight. He said I'm gonna bust that ass if I would fight you. You know he really wants the smoke, and I like I like I, I say his approach to boxing and, and honestly in life. I've seen some documentaries of him and stuff. He seems like a, a good guy, and someone that you can get behind. So you know you got Regis Progre, you got Ryan Martin, who you know many of you guys may have seen on a Golovkin undercard uh, or Roman Gonzalez undercard here or there. Uh, been a guy that's kind of been lying in the weeds, you know. Was a, was a solid amateur, just had a, a good win against uh, a faded Breedis Prescott on the Golovkin Vaz Matarosa undercard. He's someone that people won't pay much attention to, but a, a good fighter, a solid fighter who's looking for um, that big, big step up fight and, 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 and that, that win in this career that can get him to that next level. So they call him Blue Chip Ryan Blue Chip Martin. We're gonna see how Blue Chip he is in this tournament. So you got him, you got Kyle Relic, you know, Relic, a guy that. Um, I believe it was it him? Well, I'm not getting confused. Relic just fought uh, Rancis Bartholomew, I believe, and um, he just just to shut him out. I'm pretty, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was him. Yeah, it was Kyle Relic. He shut out Rancis Bartholomew, and um, he looked like you know he he'll be in the tournament. He got a world title. Um, supposedly. Hold on a second. Okay, supposedly he he already has his opponent for the tournament, which is uh, Edward Trevanovsky, who. We, who most of us know for uh, getting stopped by Julius Ndongo and who also fought Rene Cesar Quenza. So uh, that'd be a good fight, you know, but th- he'll, be, he'll be the tournament along with Troy Vanovsky. And then, of course, probably the most exciting fighter to me, just in terms of watching them fight, is uh, Ivan the Beast Baranchek. Baranchek, a guy that, um, you know, if you've watched Showbox, Baranchek is a guy that just comes to fight. Explosive, dangerous puncher. You know, he just fought... Um, the guy his name he fought forgetting, forgetting his name right now he fought he fought one former world title challenger on, on showbox and he he looks pretty damn good um yeah he looked pretty damn good in his fight so that, that's what it is there he's all he's supposedly gonna fight anthony yigit so from the 140 you got uh ryan martin pro gray yigit troyanovsky and relish so you got five slots filled already so there's roughly three that you're gonna uh, you're gonna have to fill out. You know, I think names you should look into, and I'm, I'm gonna name guys I like. I'm not gonna lie, Adrian Granados and maybe Amir Mom. You no, know, these are guys that 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 you probably look into. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you see those guys get a shot. Um, a mom's coming off of a bad loss to uh, Jose Ramirez. You know, a, a fight where she showed some some good boxing ability in spots, but that's a fight war, and he's got you know ironed out by Jose Ramirez. Stacey McKinley, uh, his trainer, did say he's going to move to 147, so maybe not. As for Adrian Granados, as most, most of you guys know, me and Adrian Granados are really good friends. 
know, I talk to Adrian on a regular basis, and I was just talking to him the other day about the Marlins and the Chicago Cubs and the Marlins, bless you, and the Marlins got their ass kicked by the Cubs. They got swept. So he was he was giving me an earful about that. But um, maybe, maybe he's the guy you look at and bring, bring into the tournament because he said he's going to fight at 140. He's told me personally he's going to fight 140. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I, like, I like what they got going on with this tournament, man. I think it's good for boxing to have this organization. Hopefully – um. They hold true to being organized in, in, in their current season of the World Boxing Series because Chris Eubank Jr. lost his fight to George Grove. He shouldn't be afforded the right to fight. Um, what's his name? Uh, Caleb Smith in the finals. You know, it, you know, if you can't get Groves and he's injured, then have Benavidez step in. Have you know Caleb play, somebody somebody that's not George uh, Chris Eubank Jr. because he lost and he should have, he should be afforded that right. So that's my opinion. But the World Boxing Series, it seems like it's going to be a lot better this year. I'm already excited from what I from what I've heard, you know, to have guys like Ivan Baroncheck and Regis Progre in the 140 tournament. I mean, you got you got my attention. You got my attention. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Take time to subscribe, and like I say in every guy star video, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just kidding. So until next time, take care, guys.